Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Jake Short about Sex Appeal, which is available now on Hulu. Welcome to the show, man. It's good to see you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. It's exciting. What's it kind of like for you? I mean, you've been doing this for a good amount of time now, so you know about this. But is it does it ever kind of hit you when the project you've been working on, it finally comes out? Because sometimes it could take a while. You could shoot it for like a year or two, and then you're not sure when it comes out. Like, how's it been when this movie is finally out right now? Honestly, I've had a lot of projects like that. And during COVID, like I had a couple come out. <clears throat> One was in London. Yep. So I didn't even really get to feel the effect of that. And the other one was like, yeah, being edited in the making for like two years. And it finally came out and we didn't get to do like a premiere or anything. And I feel like that is really when a lot of it sets in is when you get to be there and all the crew and like a director, writer, everyone's reunited on a red carpet or like at an event. And uh, we don't really get that, unfortunately, this time either. But uh, definitely feels um, more. It's very rewarding. There's a, I feel very <clears throat> very good very um yeah no for excited. sure man. a little nervous because you never know how people are going to react but definitely yeah. very excited you're kind of like yeah you're, you're putting you're you're putting art in the into the world and the world kind of just has to decide how they think about the art that's basically what it is <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> my own interpretation of what i what i think is going on in the movie and uh people have to like it and you know what either way i, I had a great time I think you did a great job playing Larson in the film, man. Seriously, I talked to you about this before we started. I think it's it's a uh, it, your character is kind of going for a lot. I thought this is the thing I kind of find very interesting, and I feel like we relate to this because I feel like during the pandemic we've been doing kind of a lot of self reflection, and I feel like your character in this film, throughout the whole film with everything going on, is doing a lot of thinking and doing a lot of self reflection and kind of figuring out the next move and everything. Did you notice that in the script when you were reading that? He's doing a lot of thinking. He's trying to figure out his next move. Yeah, definitely. I think. I mean, Avery has the very analytical side of that <laughs> thinking, and I think Larson's like, "Man, what am I going to do out of high school? How am I going to get make the most of this experience?" And I don't know if he's in the journey of like who I am yet, mm-hmm. but he definitely, he definitely has more of a sense of that than the average high schooler. So yeah. he's definitely thinking about what he's going to do, what his high school career has been, where he's going. And yeah, he's definitely doing a lot of self-reflecting, especially with with Avery. Yeah, absolutely. She, what was it like kind of working with Mika with that perspective and kind of doing a lot of those scenes? Because there's a lot of, like, yeah. you see the trick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know what there's I'm going to say. Yeah. What no, was that like? She's, she's a fucking blast to work yeah. with. We honestly, we had, a, we had a great time. Can I say the F word? Ab- absolutely. Yeah. No, no uh, worries. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And <laughs> I, I, honestly, before we started, we were both like, hey, we've never done this on camera before, um, so let's talk about it. Let's just make sure that we're both comfortable going forward. And uh, no, honestly, we, we made we made jokes about it the entire time we were shooting. So it worked out really, really well. When did you know, like, I'm curious, like, what you knew about, like, the role in the movie and everything, like, when you sign on to a project like this? Like, did you know about the character Larson when you were auditioning in the script? Did you know it was going to be Hulu? Like, you know, it was going to be American High movie? Like, what did you know about the project like in the early stages? We knew that American High has their deal with Hulu, yep. um, so we knew, we knew that they had already picked this movie up and we're yep. going to make it. Um, uh, I had the script uh, the first time, even before I auditioned, which was really awesome when they do that because you can get a real sense for the character. Yep. I think I had my own interpretation of the character, and it's <laughs> really fun to like go into the callback or like the chemistry read and hear what uh, the directors or the writers take on the character is, and you're like, okay, I understand what you guys are saying this now. So. It's a nice little um, combination of, of like a bunch of different visions, but mm-hmm. like people's interpretations for the character. And I get to go, okay, I, I see where you're coming from. I, I, I see how I saw it at first when I read the script. And honestly, sometimes it doesn't work out very well, but this yeah. time Larson was so laid back that I feel like everyone had a similar sense for him. And I just got to throw some shit out there and see what it. Pretty much. And, and it's interesting, like, you've been doing this for quite some time, and, you know, a lot of people obviously, like, recognize you from a lot of stuff when you were younger, you did, you know, the Disney Channel stuff, you did Ant Farm and everything, and I'm just curious, you know, 
what is your mindset? I mean, you're young, you're a kid, you're bouncing school and everything, but is your mindset when you're working on a show like Ant Farm, Jake, like that it is kind of a stepping stone and you're kind of getting your feet wet with the industry a little bit? Or is it just kind of like, is it work basically? Like, what's your mindset? Because it becomes a stepping stone for a lot of people like yourself, right? You work on those shows, then you get movies, but do you know it's a stepping stone when you're doing that or you're just like a kid? I mean, I think some people yeah. um, view it more as a stepping stone at first. I, I, I did view it a, a, as work at times, but yeah. honestly, I we, we just got to do wacky nonsense like five days a week. So for me, it was just a lot of fun. Yeah. And I know that like now I definitely view it like as soon as I was finished with my last show there, I was mm-hmm. like, this was a great experience. I have a lot of work under my belt. I know what it's like to be on a set and how to conduct myself. Yeah. And, yeah, there's a, a lot of value to take out of that. I think like Zendaya and Shia LaBeouf have had unbelievable careers outside yeah. of Disney, and and I, I don't know if the, you see it while you're inside it, but you definitely appreciate what you were able to do and the opportunities you were given. Like, and I'm sure I don't know if, if as like a 13 year old, I was like, yeah, I'm. This is. This yeah, is a, I, I might have been like, this is it, you know, I don't know what I'm doing I find this. it really, I don't know, I just feel like, you know, those those networks have such a big platform and a big audience and like Cute. social media, like Twitter, like everyone you look at that, that's, that was on one of those shows, like they had like social media campaigns on Twitter and Instagram for all those shows. And I feel oh, yeah. like it's one of those things where you're just kind of going into it, but then you look back and you look at the shelf life and all the TikToks and everything with shows like Sweet Life and Zach and Cody, like that stuff is massive and it's still massive this day. Like there's no shelf life for a lot of those shows. Oh no, they're huge. And I mean, <laughs> they've made, definitely made their way into like youth and pop culture and, and more so than I ever thought it would. Yeah, and we were sort of in the infancy of social media. Like those shows were like before social media, and they bring them back now, and it's well. When did you just like? Because I'm, I'm sure, like when you're talking to your family and friends, right? And they they finally like announced that like the Disney Channel archive, like the Disney Channel library, was going to be put on Disney Plus. Did you have any of those conversations with like your family and friends? Be like, oh wow, like Ant Farm is going to come up a lot more now because it's just there, and like everyone's going to have access to it. I mean. <laughs> A lot of my friends, um, we 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 were like, oh, we never thought we'd be able to see this show um, uh-huh. outside of like iTunes or, or whatever. And Disney then picked up. I think I had all three of the shows that I did for them. But no, we. I, I think I brought it up with a few of my friends that I worked with on the channel. But other than that, um, my family was like, oh, you're doing what? Oh yeah, yeah okay, it's, it's cool. Now you, 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 you do, do you still? I don't know if you still do. At one point, you were doing martial arts. You're doing karate. Do you still do karate? Oh yeah, um, I definitely don't do that karate anymore. Okay, um, that that karate looks very cool. It's just aesthetically appealing. It almost does less for self defense than just laying on the ground and yeah. curling up into a ball, basically. But yeah. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> I haven't I haven't kept up as much with it now, but yeah, I definitely I love doing that um, when I was like thirteen, fourteen because. That was integrated with like tumbling, so I was really into. So when you look at what? shows like Cobra Kai and everything, is that just kind of one thing that you're just kind of like, man, like it'd be cool to be in a show like that because you have kind oh, of that so back, bad. yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. That's a great show too. It's a great concept. Netflix did a fantastic job. Well, it's that. funny because I talked to I talked to Aiden Minx who played Angus on Ant Farm. And he's in yeah, Cobra Kai. Dude, that, I'm telling you, that scene, it comes up on TikTok, that scene. And it's funny. This is kind of like a full circle moment a little bit because I've interviewed like I've interviewed you now and I've interviewed um, Aiden. And I interviewed Zibby who plays Madame Gugu. But you know that scene at the, at the Chinese? Oh, like yeah. The, yeah. So that scene always shows up on TikTok like that. That was some funny stuff. Like with Angus with like the ordering the food. Like that, that, that was good. Like that was pretty funny. <laughs> I remember working with that guy and I forget his name, but he's been like, I remember first seeing him in Seinfeld when I was like, yeah. And we got to work with him on that show. And you're back. You're in a Chinese restaurant. And he was like, he was like, (laughs) so good. It was the same setup. But it's just, it's crazy. But like, I mean, it's one of those things too. You look at this um, film, Sex Appeal and everything. Um, You have worked on a lot of things like Ant Farm and Sex Appeal has a lot of goofy moments and everything. You know what I mean? You've worked on some other genres as well. Were you hoping that you were going to kind of be able to work on a different bunch of genres of, of, of projects, Jake, or did it kind of just happen? 
Um, I mean, I think this is pretty similar to what I've done in the past, yeah. but uh, with definitely a more mature take on it, mm -hmm. um, obviously. But and I, I love the comedy world, and I honestly that's where I grew up, yeah. and that's what that's what I know. So I'm very comfortable in it, and I enjoy it. There's definitely a, a large part of me that wants to be able to branch out, yeah. um, and that that's just hopefully around the corner. But um, right now, I'm I'm sticking in the pocket and and and, and doing what I know. Yeah. But, Definitely, definitely want to branch out into some more, more serious stuff. But hey, dude, this, this film is, uh, this film has got some juice. Okay. <laughs> it really does. And it's just like, it's one of those things too, where, you know, there's a scene where Avery, you know, um, I think that's like Larson's garage. So you're playing guitar and she comes in and talks to you and everything. So my, my, the, the soundtrack of this movie is pretty, pretty awesome too. Like, I really like the soundtrack of this film. My question to you kind of now too is, um, what do you kind of think about the use now of not only music and TV and, and film, but specifically with kind of social media and Spotify where like, it's a big deal now movie oh, yeah. sound like like tv soundtracks and movie soundtracks are huge now because you can just instantly just go on spotify now just like Find listen to the whole them. album so what do you yeah. think about that like working on movies and shows now versus kind of the older days we were working on disney channel like the music's become more important i feel like oh yeah definitely i mean like to be fair when i worked on disney they I mean <laughs> they have their money but like they did not spend anything on a soundtrack other than like when we had musical numbers and whatever. Yeah. But like I just watched Big Little Lies and mm -hmm. every single song on that soundtrack is something that everyone knows and they got like rights to the temptations and and honestly all that like you can have an amazing soundtrack. It really just it's unfortunate that it depends on how much money you have. I will pause stuff and get out like my Shazam. All the time. I do it all the time. Dude. Oh, God, all the time. <laughs> What kind of music do you like? Are you all over the map like myself, or do you have a specific genre you like listening to? I'm I'm, I'm a little all over the place, yeah. but yeah, I, I like a lot of classic rock. I have a a few vinyls put up on my wall here. Yeah. Um, I uh, I really like jazz. Yeah. I don't understand it, but I know that I enjoy it. Who are some of your favorite? Uh, who Who are some of your favorite classic rock bands? Like the like the usual, like the Led Zeppelin, the Deep Purple, yeah, like that Zeppelin, stuff. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Uh, also, I love '80s music too because '80s music make for a great, great, great soundtrack. Oh yeah, Cobra, um, Cobra Kai had a lot of that too. Cobra, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We gotta make it happen. Jake Short on Cobra Kai. Gotta, gotta, we gotta, we, it's gotta happen. <laughs> I'll start stretching again, man. I'm, I'm ready. You're a, like, you, you know, you act, but another way of, of kind of characterizing what you do is Jake Short is a storyteller. What excites you about storytelling specifically? Um, I think. As a kid, I always used to say, like, making people laugh and getting a reaction out of people. And I think found, foundationally that that still exists. Um, I think the importance of storytelling now for me is just uh, having a voice and, and feeling heard and telling people something that's important to me. Yep. And this is actually the cool thing about this is that there's a, a lot of realness. I think there's a similar coming of age stories out there, but the realness of like, you know, having a relationship with your best friend is, is really important. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the complexity of that and how, how it can go really great or go really poorly. And I mean, I the, the movie's out, so I'm not going to say what happens, but I was telling you before we started, like, I love, I love what they did in the ending. Yes, like I told man. you about this, like, I, I love the ending of it. Like, it's great. Like, I think it's, really a good way of kind of going a different direction in my opinion yeah it's the same like all the whole thing with this film for me is like a preparedness movie yeah that that they made in the, in the 1950s for for world war ii uh, this is a uh, or 1940s this is this is uh your coming of age teenage preparedness movie be prepared for complexity and like not everything <clears throat> without spoiling the ending and not everything uh you know turns out the way that you initially thought. I didn't see it coming at all. Like I didn't, I, I, like, I think, you know what, that, that kind of sucks sometimes. Right. Because like a lot of films 
would end certain ways, right? And we're predictable, mm-hmm. right? But like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see that coming. I thought it was gonna go the other direction. <laughs> there was so much talk on set too about how they were gonna end the film because they were never really certain what would go over well. It made me, I, it made me speak about it. Like, it has, it has, like, it, it made it definitely. Like, I, I, I'm thinking about the ending because I don't remember watching kind of like a rom com kind of movie. Like, I mean, it's it. it would you say it's it's a rom com, right? Because it's definitely pretty, yeah. It, like I haven't seen a rom com kind of take a direction like it like this in a while, to be honest with you. And you know, I'm gonna get the word out as much as I can on popdrive.com with the reviews and everything. But to be honest with you, like I, I enjoyed the ending. It, you you all did such a great job, seriously. Thank you, man. I'm 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 really excited with how it turned out too. Yeah, so. absolutely. And uh, before we you know wrap up very quickly, when people get a chance to see it, um, besides being entertained and everything, what do you hope that they'll get out of it when they watch Sex Appeal on Hulu? Um, like in terms of a message or just like a feeling? Or just in general, involved? feeling message. Um. Well, I yeah yeah again I I hope that they, um, at least the young audience watching it takes takes a sense of like oh this is um relationships are fragile mm-hmm. Lot, lots of friendships can take twists and turns but like make sure that throughout your life you maintain um good contact with people yeah and also are very aware of how you treat them and and where you stand in each other's lives and your roles in them yep um and honestly just i mean the ending's so great uh but still no matter what happens everything's gonna Everything's going to work out. And I mean, what's the age old saying about like, if you love someone, they'll come back to you. Yeah. I think, um, <laughs> I think that's also really important. <laughs> Jake, thank you so much for your time and coming on pop alternative, man. This was awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Man. So yeah, the movie's out now on Hulu. Where can people follow you on social media? to Keep up date with everything. Um, <clears throat> on Instagram, I'm Jake short on Twitter. I'm the Jake short and I am just a dinosaur with all the rest of those social medias. Amazing. Well, this has been Pop Turn. Yeah. <laughs> this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Sex Appeal is now available on Hulu. Until next time, this is Jake Short and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.